weeks ago. Uh, welcome to the legions of people watching online um, and everybody in the room, obviously. Uh, nice to see you all. Um, uh, I'm Oliver Coppard, I'm the Mayor of South Yorkshire, uh, for those who are watching. Um, I have agenda item one, which is just welcome and apologies. I think clearly Roz has sent um, a letter to represent Doncaster today. Hi, Green. Nice to see you. Um, do we have any other apologies? Because I don't need to. Um, apologies from Kate Joseph and uh, Damien Allen, but they've sent representatives in their place. Thank you very much. Uh, in which case, move on to item number two, which is just announcements from the chair. So I've just got a few things that I just wanted to briefly cover if I could. Firstly, um, since we last met, South Yorkshire has been announced as the UK's first investment zone, which is obviously um, a brilliant thing to be able to say. Um, that is really good news for our region. Um, it means not just £80 million pounds worth of support coming in from this government to help us start up, scale up and grow businesses in the region, but at the, at the same time we were able to announce the um, partnership, the next phase of Boeing's investment in South Yorkshire, Boeing's only manufacturing facility in Europe here in South Yorkshire will now be extended. That's a, that's a further £80 million pound partnership, which is another uh, mark of confidence um, and a sign of our ambition here in South Yorkshire. They're very pleased that they are cementing their place here in the region um, and, uh, and long may that continue. Monday the 3rd of July saw the official launch of the new Independent P Commission Pathways to Work in Barnsley uh, with a stellar cast and both me and Dan as well, Dan Jarvis. Um, so that is chaired by the Right Honourable Alan Milburn, Torsten Bell is on there and others. Um, I'm really pleased to be uh, working on that alongside Sir Steve. Um, over the years Barnsley has a I think proud tradition of leading the way on some of these uh, schemes, so we will look forward to seeing the results of that uh, work um, and how that might feed in, not just to Barnsley, but in the whole work of South Yorkshire and hopefully actually nationally as well. We've been working hard to reform the MCA since the last board meeting to improve our internal governance, um, which the agenda item on constitutional reform will reflect. Thank you for those who stepped down from the thematic boards um, for all their hard work and outstanding commitment and the contributions that they've made to not just the MCA but to the region as well. That includes obviously the LEP, um, who've helped us to build a collective decision-making process. And we now move into a new world, which I'm really excited about um, and look forward to that discussion on today's item. And then probably, um, well, certainly more sad news also, probably worth just marking uh, the passing of Sir Bob Kerslake, who I know a lot of people around the table will have known and have great affection for. Um, Bob was a friend, Bob was somebody who contributed a huge amount to the whole of South Yorkshire and our country, and I know that everybody will agree that he was a huge force for good and, uh, and in many ways visionary. Um, so I was um, at his funeral last week, and it was um, a real testament to the life that he lived, um, some of the comments and uh, reflections that we heard on the day. And then uh, finally, I'd like to thank Martin, the four chief execs, and other officers from across the MCA and local authorities for the many hours of work that they have put into today's uh, today's meeting and getting the papers into the place that they've uh, been gotten into so that's brilliant thank you okay on to agenda item number three which is just urgent items uh, i'm not aware of any urgent items uh, item number four items to be considered in the absence of public and press i'm not aware of any items to be discussed in private um, item number five voting rights for non-constituent members um, you will advise on this agenda item apparently <laughs> As per usual, voting rights are for constituent members only. Thank you. Um, uh, item number six, declarations of interest by individual members in relation to any item of business on the agenda other than the usual standing uh, items of, um, of interest uh, by individual members. Are there any others that we need to be aware of? Nope. Well, thank you. Um, item number seven, reports from and questions by uh, members. None received in advance of the meeting. Item number eight, receipt of petitions, none received in advance of the meeting. Item number nine, public questions, none received in advance of the meeting. Item number 10, minutes of the meeting held on 5th of June, 2023. Are members content that the minutes are an accurate record of that meeting? Any amendments? Yep, Bill, thank you, take them. And then uh, on to item number 11, please, substantive item on Police and Crime Commissioner next steps, um, which was gonna be Claire, but is, I believe, Martin. Uh, thank you, Oliver. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, um, members of the board um, will note that we 
last discussed this item on the 5th of June um, and agreed three or four key steps. Um, and today's report is a very brief update on progress. Um, the joint letter was sent by leaders and the mayor and the PCC to the two secretaries of state uh, to request that government officials work with uh, the MCA to draft legislation. Um, the second was that the mayor um, and myself and my team continued discuss discussions and negotiations with both Home Office and DLUC um, and the third and fourth were about engagement. Um, table item, uh, sorry, section number two and the, and the table associated with that uh, shows and illustrates, I think, the timeframes associated with uh, the key next steps, the key milestones uh, as we move towards integration. Um, to update uh, for today, we are still awaiting the confirmation from the two Secretaries of State. Um, I followed that up um, a two weeks ago with the two permanent secretaries, and we had uh, both contact from DLUC last week and a letter which I received late on Friday from DLUC um, confirming a move in a positive direction, but not yet a signature uh, from the Secretary of State and likewise with Home Office. Um, I suspect this is around about administration and timeframes rather than obstacles, um, but I will update further as soon as we have confirmation. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions on that table? It's probably worth me just saying just and putting on record my thanks to um, both colleagues around the table, but also Alan Billings' office for the kind of collegial approach they've taken to those negotiations and discussions. And actually, frankly, thanks to government as well for the way in which they've engaged in that conversation. So um, pleased that we've been able to move that forward um, in the way that we are. So the MCA board is asked to note progress to date, including the response received from the Home Secretary and Secretary of State for the Department of Leveling Up, Housing and Communities, to uh, agree that the MCA board will receive a further update at the September board meeting. All of which. Um, thank you. Okay, in which case, on to item number 12, please. Amended MCA constitution from Steve. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a follow on report for, again from the 5th of June board where this board agreed to the constitutional and governance changes to the MCA. The report seeks approval to the amendment to the MCA's constitution to reflect those governance changes and to make other changes that are highlighted in the report. Or it's worth noting that if the PCC proposal progresses that we've just discussed in the last report, another further amended version of the Constitution will have to come forward with significant changes. So it, this version is probably interim until, until that change. Uh, open for questions. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Both. Chris. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just there's a, a, a diagram in paragraph 3.6 on page 7 of the uh, proposed Constitution spoke to Martin about this last week. I'm not sure the diagram does what we need it to do or actually tells a very accurate story about what we're trying to describe. So my suggestion is we just take that out of the interim document for now and we can come back to it if we can um, resolve some of those issues. I'm advised that this is a good idea, so I'm happy to go with that <laughs> if others are as well. Uh, brilliant. Any other comments or questions about those changes? Amendments? No? Nope. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. In which case the recommendation is that the MCA approve the amendment to the Constitution and that such amendments are set out in the track changes to the appended version of the Constitution, clearly taken on board. Council leaves comments. Everybody agreed? Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, on to agenda item number 13. I feel like we shouldn't make agenda item number 13 the accounts. I feel like we're tempting <laughs> fate by doing it in that way. But, um, okay, statement of accounts, please, from Gareth. Uh, uh, update on the 2021-22 statement of accounts. Thanks, Chair. Uh, this report is simply an update on where we are with the conclusion of the 21-22 audit of the MCA Statement of Accounts. Previously informed the Board of um, delays in the conclusion of the audit and this paper updates that we now don't expect to be able to bring the accounts for approval until September. This is a national issue. At the time of writing, just 27% of audits nationally were complete. The auditor continues to indicate that there, uh, he will be issuing an unqualified opinion with no matters to report and value for money, but we simply need to go through the process. 
Um, I am pleased to be able to inform the board that we have issued the 22-23 accounts for public inspection, so they're available for review um, at the time of writing. So happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you. Any questions for Gareth? No? Nothing happy? Okay, in which case we just asked to uh, note the update provided. Uh, thank you, Gareth. On to agenda item number 14, quarter one budget update in 2024-25. Budget planning, uh, a report providing an update on the authority's budget position after quarter one of 2024. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this report is um, doing three things. It updates on the revenue and capital position after the first quarter of the financial year, provides an update on treasury management performance, and it sets out the process that we're going through um, for the development of the budget for the forthcoming financial year. There are a num number of prominent issues at, at quarter one. We've um, refreshed the budget to take account of the bus and tram investment proposals that are on the agenda for today. We've noted further capital program slippage and we're working with directors of finance across the, the region to um, address those issues. And we're running with higher cash balances than we would otherwise expect at this moment. And that's enabling us to accrue better investment income returns. And that investment income we're proposing gets invested in some of the bus proposals before us today. Um, we're also noting potential for further costs that may arise subject to government consent around the um, mayoral uh, election in May 24, um, subject to the transfer of the police and crime uh, commissioning powers. So I'm happy to take any questions at that point. Thank you. Any questions for Gareth? Yeah, cheers, Chair. I've got <coughs> three points uh, to make on on the different issues that Gareth actually touched on. One, one does actually relate to item 11, and it is uh, the transfer of the PCC to the MCA. And when it happens, will will councils retain any PCC grants uh, that are ongoing, and uh, will we be able to have access to annual grants that are currently available in their present format. So that is question number one. Gareth, do you want to answer question one first? Yep. Okay, let me just take that first. Okay, just yeah. I, th I don't think we've made any decisions or uh, okay. begun any conversations about what this might mean in terms of financial position, so happy to have that conversation with colleagues and partners as we progress the negotiations, but at this point there aren't any, um, there are no decisions or indeed conversations we've had. Okay. Second point is, and it does allude to something in the, in the papers around uh, paying for the uh, the election, uh, and you know, have we reached any uh, sort of decision on what how we're going to pay for it? Is, are we going to be borrowing? Are we going to take it from reserves? Are we going to pass around a cloth cap? I don't know. Uh, Martin or Gareth, do you want to take that? I'll take that. Yeah, um, so conversations are ongoing with government officials around whether there would be any contributions from government towards the cost of the elections. If there aren't, we already have a plan in place to pay for the cyclical mayoral elections that come around, and we don't see contributions from partners to those costs. For what's worth, I'm happy to do it on a show of hands. So <laughs> people are okay with that. Okay, and the final point is, is around uh, uh, grants and uh, budgets Currently, our, uh, everything is done in, in arrears with, uh, with the MCA, any dealings with local authority in the MCA. I wonder if there's any possibility to, to explore the opportunities of funding in advance to local authorities. And I say that with the best of intentions because, as we all know, local authority budgets, as all budgets are, under pressure and... Uh, you know, if we could have that flexibility, that would help us immensely. Thank you. Thank you. Can I bring Martin on? Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'll go in first, uh, Councillor, if that's okay, and then I'm sure Gareth will follow. Um, one of the things that we put in place um, a year or so ago was a revenue stream to support many of the schemes um, so that we could achieve a, pi a pipeline for projects. Um, and um, that is a fund which um, Gareth, uh, with the appropriate approvals, administers, and I think has been very successful in supporting each local authority uh, to develop projects and programs. But of course, when it comes to the approval um, of a project, we have a full and proper process to go through associated with gain share. Um, so 
I don't anticipate that that would be an option, Councillor, in terms of uh, capital funding for projects in advance. Karen? Yeah, just to elaborate, so we, we do release funding in advance from project feasibility funds. We do release funding in advance from our, our city region sustainable transport revenue stream, and we do release uh, scheme development costs in advance. It is harder to release a uh, capital investment uh, grant largely because of the way government expects us to manage funds. Um, but it's something that we do keep under review and I'll, I'll pick up with officers if it's a particular issue. Okay. Any more questions? No. Do, do you want to come in? No, you need to come. Um, okay, any other questions or comments or we'll have to move on from that one. So that's item number 14. Recommend that the MCA board approve the revised budget Estimates, everybody happy? Content? Great, thank you. In which case, we move on to item number 15, which is the tendered bus services network approval and changes to Simca travel concessions. This is a report that sets out a financially sustainable approach to locally funded bus services, the, the tendered service provision for a period of around two years, highlighting policy changes for tendered services. These are, in no, in no doubt, difficult policy options and they are a consequence of the cost of replacing all of the lost commercial services exceeding the local funding available and frankly as a result of government funding cuts to South Yorkshire. So I will hand over to Pat please who can talk us through the paper. Thank you Oliver. Um, so this paper is summarising um, how we intend to um, how we recommend to spend uh, £17 million pounds over the next couple of years to uh, protect bus service to the greatest extent possible. Um, the paper sets out uh, the options around what we can do in terms of changing concessionary fares, discretionary concessionary fares, as well as uh, protecting the various bus services that are tendered across our uh, network over the next uh, couple of years. Um, the paper also further um, highlights that um, th there are significant implications really uh, associated with this, as, um, as Oliver has uh, set out. Um, there are some tough decisions uh, to be taken and we recommend that option one is um, being progressed in the current circumstances. So um, I would welcome any questions. Any other questions, please? Uh, thanks, Chair. Yeah, I mean, I, I would echo your comments um, at the top of this item about the, the difficult decisions that we're facing. Um, I think I say this every time that we bring an item on bus, but I keep saying it in the hope that it's reported widely, which is, the bus network is under uh, incredible pressure as a result of two things. One is there are fewer people using buses after COVID. And whilst the number of people using buses is still increasing, it's increasing slowly. The second one is that the government just hasn't put enough money in to enable us to continue to run services at the price that they've been at. There isn't enough government money in the system. And that is the issue that drives us to have to make some choices in order to protect the bus network as it stands, to keep as many buses running as we can, that means that we've got to make some really difficult decisions about where we spend local money, uh, public money locally. We are straining every sinew in order to protect that bus network, putting millions of pounds, more than 10 million pounds worth of um, South Yorkshire's public money in to make sure that that bus network is operational. Now, these are choices that we wouldn't want to um, have to make in the paper today. But what I really hope the message that comes out of this meeting is that without us making these choices, there would be a lot more communities facing cuts to routes, buses that aren't coming back, less frequent services, buses stopping earlier in an evening or not running at weekends. And that would put us in a really difficult position because once those buses are gone, they just don't come back again. So people around this room will, will know that we've had these conversations, um, but I hope that people watching this outside will see that we are putting maintaining a bus network first and doing all the things that we can to protect that, in frankly a scandalous absence of government support. Thank you. I think we all wholeheartedly agree with your comments. Can I bring in Councillor Jones, please? Yeah, absolutely. I wholeheartedly uh, agree with, uh, with what Chris has just said. and. Uh, what we uh, are in danger of here is is the public's perception of believing that it's a local locally determined decision. We need to get our comms right on this 
future and and we need to get it and focus it where where the real issue lies not to, not at a regional or local level I think the point <clears throat> I think the point we need to make is um, if it wasn't for the successful financial management of the MCA this position would be even worse so I agree with Chris entirely protecting the networks has got to be the first priority there's little point in having benefits in other ways if you haven't got a bus turning up so you've got to keep the buses on the road but the second bit is if we weren't putting our own money into this the position would be a lot worse um, the challenge is to try and get central government to fund public transport in places like ours like it does in other parts of the country uh, which the ratio is sort of five to one difference uh, we could give people just about every service they want if we if we got the kind of investment that parts of the the south get but for the meantime um, this is um, an unwelcome proposal because we're having to do things we don't want to do but a solid proposal that, that I think meets what most people's priorities would be and that is keep the buses on the road yes absolutely chair um, I think there's a line in the report which spells this out really clearly um, DFT allocated the MCA 3.1 million of bus funding, which is around 50% of previous grant funding settlements. And that's the reality set out there. We're getting about half of what we need in order to keep the network running in the way that we would want it to. And that has forced us to take this choice. We have a commitment around this table to improve public transport in this region. And this is about maintaining the network so that we're in a position in a few years time to be able to build on it and make it better but if we weren't taking the choices that we're facing today then we risk whole communities losing their vital support services so no none of us want to be taking this decision but that and funding settlement is exactly why we are having to thank you i mean look i clearly agree with all of the comments but i do think it's worth me putting them on record these are an appalling set of choices that we're facing that we're being asked to make right now, but the reality is they are no choices at all. And um, Councillor Halfton is absolutely right that if it weren't for the financial management of this organisation, this situation would be much worse. But even despite the way in which those finances have been managed, we are still facing horrific cuts to bus services across South Yorkshire. A, a service which was already on its knees will now be cut even further. I, I listened or read the comments from the Prime Minister doing his best sort of Braveheart impression crying freedom over the weekend but what about the freedom of our communities to catch the bus to be able to get to see friends and family to go to work to get to college to make actual real choices about how they travel across South Yorkshire those are the things that are being cut as a result of the decision by the government as you say uh, Tom to cut funding coming into our region we were given, have been given about 15% of the money that other regions in the north have been given through BSIP and other forms of, of funding. So there is no doubt that it's going to have an impact on bus services in South Yorkshire. When this government were elected, they were elected on a promise to level up this country. And particularly, they said that they were going to deliver a London-style transport system to the whole of this country by 2030. And we are now in a position where we are seeing cuts, loaders upon cuts, loaders upon cuts here in South Yorkshire. Um, and the bus network is vital to people in this region. We had a world-class public transport system in South Yorkshire uh, 40 years ago. And then over 40 years, as a result of privatisation, um, and frankly, no government stepped in to fix that over that course of that 40 years. We're now in the position that we are in. So I know everybody around this table is committed to fixing public transport in South Yorkshire. And I know we are ambitious for public transport in South Yorkshire. I just wish we had a partner in government who matched that scale of ambition and were prepared to put their money where their mouth is and actually allow people um, to get about South Yorkshire so we could create the economy that we want in South Yorkshire and that people could have the freedom they need in South Yorkshire to travel how they want. Um, so with that, can I please ask if people are prepared to um, uh, agree the recommendations that the MCA board within the levels of transport budget approved at the January 2023 MCA board approved the following. Delegate authority to MCA's acting executive director of transport in consulta consultation with the MCA chief exec and the mayor of South Yorkshire toward tendered service contracts that deliver a stable and sustainable tendered service network for a period of approximately 
two years. The contract awards are to be uh, executed in accordance with the service prioritisation and contract award principles set out in Appendix A and Appendix B, respectively. Increase the child concessionary fare for those under age 18, uh, under 18 on bus and tram journeys from 80p per trip to £1 per trip with effect from the 1st of November 2023. Remove the discretionary concessionary fare for persons aged 18 to 21 Zoom Beyond on bus and tram journeys with effect from the 1st of November 2023. Continue the fare cap on tram services in South Yorkshire funded locally by the MCA, not by the government through to the 31st of October 2023 at £2, rising to £2.80 for around one year from the 1st of November 2023 until the end of November 2024. Note that the DFT funded cap on bus fares has been extended to the end of October 2025 with an increase from £2 to £2.50 from the 1st of November 2023. Are we all agreed? Great, thank you. Um, agenda item... 16 then please south yorkshire investment zone proposal from tom bowsford uh morning um as the mayor said uh at the top we were the first uh, investment zone announced uh, a few weeks ago now and um, there are still some details to work through on the delivery vehicle interventions and governance however following the delegated authority provided by the board in june we are asking the board now to approve the following um to endorse the lead sector for South Yorkshire as advanced manufacturing, but recognising this is defined in an expansive fashion to include sectors such as digital and health. To endorse the proposed geographical focus for the South Yorkshire investment zone with a spatial core and opportunity sites. To endorse at a high level the suggested governance models for South Yorkshire investment zone and note the progress and direction of travel and interventions. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Tom? Okay, thank you. Well, well we should welcome the news. Yeah. Really. <laughs> thank so you. That, that met with a slightly <laughs> I was going to do it if you wouldn't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, perhaps I'll say a little okay. bit then and, okay. and bring you in. Thank you. Um, so, so this is good news. I mean, I think it's worth saying, and, and we've just said about the, the problems we've had with sustainable funding from this government for mm -hmm. basic services. Well, there's some money on the table here to help us bring some jobs and businesses into the area, so we're going to take it. Um, and actually doing that on a basis that, um, that builds on the genuinely world-class reputation uh, of the advanced manufacturing part in that corridor along the Bowling Sheffield um, boundary. You referred to the Boeing site there uh, earlier. Um, these are... Um, uh, kind of marquee businesses, if you like, for what we want the future of the economy in South Yorkshire uh, to be like. And the fact that the government has come to us before anywhere else in England uh, reflects that, actually. So we want to see um, that continue to grow and be successful. We want to continue to see the benefits of that spreading out, which is why I think that, that bit around the spatial core stretching right from Sheffield City Centre uh, through to Rotherham Town Centre, plenty of places in there that I want to see being more economically uh, active. Um, that, that's all good news. I suppose the only note of caution is, whilst it's £80 million over five years, it's only £80 million over five years, and there will be an awful lot more things that we need to do uh, to bring our economy up to the, the standard that we want. But it's good news, and we should welcome it. Brilliant. Thank you. Echo. Sorry, Tom, do you want to come in? I would just come in briefly um, to really echo what um, Councillor Reid said. This is a good real sign of confidence that people have got in... South Yorkshire and you know we should celebrate that it recognizes that we've got strengths in green aerospace in advanced manufacturing in digital in health and these are all things that we should be championing and celebrating and our task now is to build on this initial announcement and make sure that the people of Sheffield Rotherham Barnsley and Doncaster benefit in the form of the investment that will follow new jobs new apprenticeship new opportunities for small businesses to be part of the supply chains but no this is a a good sign um, a good shot of confidence for our region and it's to be celebrated Great. <coughs> now welcome this investment into south yorkshire and you know clearly we are the the front runners on on this uh investment zone scheme uh the the caveat that I would add to that is that it is South Yorkshire and all of South Yorkshire should have some benefit from this uh, and I appreciate it's being placed where the current uh, development and investment zones are uh, 
as in education, employment, etc. But there, there is a wider need for this to be uh, rippled out further than Rotherham Town Centre. Thank you. Um, so, for what's worth, I, I was really pleased that we were able to work with government, and I am happy to, you know, give credit where credit is due. When this government do do the right thing by South Yorkshire, I will uh, be clear about that. As much as I'm also clear about when they are cutting money from into our region, but I was really pleased we were able to work with the government in order to create opportunity sites across the whole of the region. So, certainly, kind of Barnsley and Junction Six in particular, and Doncaster and the opportunity sites there are a significant part of that plan, and that's absolutely right because we do need. Um, the investment, jobs, growth and opportunity to spread right across the region, as you quite rightly say, Glenn. So really pleased that we could do that. I think this is absolutely good news. It is a mark and a sign of our uh, confidence. I also think it's a mark and a sign of the way in which we are working as a region uh, together to advance the interests of South Yorkshire and able to do that in the way that we are. And so I was really pleased that we were able to um, all get together and get behind that, um, get behind that plan. And um, I think this is one part of what has to be a bigger plan for the whole economy of South Yorkshire and 80 million pounds is very welcome like you say but at the same time we need a lot more investment um, and money coming into the region if we're going to do this properly in the way that I know we all want to and um, so I look forward to working with the government to um, get even more money uh, for South Yorkshire on the back of this investment zone status but this is a very good start and um, so can I please move on to recommendations uh, can we uh, please agree that the board endorse the recommended lead sector for the South Yorkshire investment zone as advanced manufacturing design defined expansively to include linked subsectors such as digital and health endorse the proposed geographical focus for the South Yorkshire investment zone endorse the suggested governance models for the South Yorkshire investment zone and note the progress and direction of travel on the investment zone interventions. Are we all agreed? Brilliant. Thank you very much. In which case, on to item number 17, uh, the Getting Building Fund Delivery Programme from Gary. Thank you, Chair. I'm really pleased to be able to present a good news story. Uh, this is about the region delivering at pace and scale as a reliable delivery partner <coughs> for government and in support of our communities. So at the height of the pandemic, Government released 33.6 million to the region. We got that money, we invested it into priorities and we got things moving in the region. So we've invested in the Digital Invasion Hub in Barnsley, the Century Business Centre in Rotherham and colleges in Doncaster. We supported regeneration across the region, including Market Gate Bridge in Barnsley, Quality Streets in Doncaster and Fargate and Heart of the City in Sheffield. So I can really commend this report to the board, Mayor. Uh, there's lots of good schemes that have been delivered at PACE, and my thanks to colleagues across the region who contributed to the effort. Brilliant. Thank you. I, I recognise that these papers can be, you know, occasionally not the most riveting of reads. I do appreciate that. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think this is one of those papers that if people are watching online, particularly from the media, want to have a look at and see some of the work that we've been doing and the culmination of some of that work, I think it's well worth um, five or ten minutes of people's time to be able to see that we are making progress on big and important scheme for the whole of the region. Um, does anybody have any other comments or questions about the paper? No? In which case, can I please ask that the board note the progress and impact within South Yorkshire and with our within our communities as a result of the investment of the Getting Building Fund? Thank you. Uh, agenda item number 18, please. Programme approvals again from Gary. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just to move on from the previous paper, this is the uh, quarterly programme approvals report. We're seeking um, approval to progress two brownfield schemes, one scheme building upon existing activity in, in Waverley, and another scheme building upon uh, the place generation schemes in Goldthorpe. We're also seeking approval for Doncaster's final transforming city scheme at Balby, just west of the city, and we're seeking one change request to an existing Barnsley scheme. Also seeking approval for the grant acceptance and disbursement of some transport maintenance monies and also some of the transport money that will support the interventions that Pat described earlier on the agenda. So I'm pleased to uh, commend the report to the board. Thank you very much. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions about the paper? No, some great schemes in here actually. Um, so. Um, please listen carefully because I don't want to repeat this if I can. Um, this report recommends that the board approves Brownfield Housing Programme Schemes A, progression of Sky House Waverley Central from full business case to full approval and award of £1.3 million grant to Sky House Company, uh, brackets White Rose Limited, subject to the conditions set out in Assurance Summary A1. B, progression of the Goldthorpe Housing Project from OBC to FBC and approval for award of £2.53 million grant to Barnsley Metropolitan Borough Council, subject to the conditions set out in Assurance Summary attached to Appendix A2. 
Transport Programme Schemes C, progression up west of Doncaster Bowlby from full business case FBC to full approval and award of £3.4 million pound grant to the City of Doncaster Council, subject to the conditions set out in Assurance Summary A3. D, approval of change request Barnsley Civic Market Gate Bridge, detailed in 1.10, grant acceptance. E, acceptance of £2.49 million pounds local authority capital allocations 2023-24 grant from the Department of Transport and uh, onward award. F, acceptance of £3.1 million pounds bus funding and cost of living support for bus users grant. And then delegated authority. G, delegate authority to the head of paid service in consultation with the Section 73 and monitoring officer to enter into legal agreements from the, for the schemes above. H, delegate authority to the head of paid service in consultation with the Section 73 and monitoring officer to approve the release of development cost funding in line with the assurance framework. Are we all agreed? Brilliant. Thank you very much. In which case, on to agenda uh, item 19, thematic board minutes and action logs from Martin Cooper. Thank you, um, Oliver. Um, this is um, very simply a set of four minutes from each of the um, thematic boards, um, which in the new governance arrangements uh, will be um, are being stood down in and um, the successor arrangements with the Business Advisory Board and Mayor's Economic Advisory Council uh, will begin in the autumn. Um, and notes, the minutes included include uh, Business Recovery and Growth Board, Skills and Employability, Housing and Infrastructure Board and the Transport and Environment Board uh, Mayor. And with that also a um, a very heartfelt thank you. You and I have both written together um, a letter to all of the members who have served on the boards, the elected members over a number of years and uh, for their um, huge commitment of time and effort um, and um, a, a real appreciation, I think, from the MCA board for that work. Thank you. Thank you. Just, I mean, just to add to that, I, a lot of the work that we do um, in this organisation wouldn't have happened had it not been for the countless hours <laughs> that have been put in by members on those boards and that will go largely unremarked, unseen uh, and often unthanked so um, it is worth reflecting on that for a minute about all the work that's gone into those and making um, the decisions that have moved um, this organisation in South Yorkshire forward so genuine thanks to the people that have been involved um, and officers that have supported those boards. So can we please um, resolve to the MCA board is asked to one, approve the final minutes of all thematic board meetings as true records. Two, note the action logs for each of those thematic boards. Are we all agreed? Thank you. Um, in which case, on to item uh, number 20, which is just the delegated authority report from Martin. Uh, thank you, Oliver. Um, so this is the normal report brought to MCA board to record decisions under officer delegation and run from December 21 to the 4th of July 2023. Thank you. Any comments or questions? No. In which case, uh, uh, the MCA is just asked to note the decisions and delegations made. Thank you very much. Um, okay, before we finish, is there any other business? Anything anybody would like to add or comment? No? In which case, that's the end of the meeting. Thank you, everybody. Um, and thank you for dialing in. Thank you.